So if you aren't from Visual's channel, which I'm guessing you are, but if you're not, then I filmed a video on his channel just because he's on holiday and I had to cover, um, blah, 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 yeah. Um, I went through this, how to create this sort of header without using any stocks, um, just, you know, creating your own shapes and stuff. And that's sort of what I'm going to go through here, but more, I don't know the word, like fluid, more like abstract way of doing it, I guess. So it's by using the gradient mesh tool in Illustrator. So I'm just going to make a new document and I'm just going to put it to RGB because we're not going to print anything out. Uh, 500 by 500 okay lovely straight away what I'm gonna do is add a rectangle by pressing M on the keyboard and dragging a rectangle now if you wanted to make a Twitter header you could um, I'm just gonna undo you could click and then set it to 1500 by 500 which is the Twitter header size click OK and then you have a Twitter header box It is a bit small but you can scale it down as long as when you scale it down you press shift and alt or you don't have to hold alt, but if you hold shift it just locks the uh, size, it just makes it smaller. Whereas if you let go of shift, it sort of warps it. So you want to make sure you hold shift when you're scaling things down, just in Photoshop and Illustrator, just in general really. I would recommend making a rectangle just like, just, yeah, just like this. And creating your gradient mesh inside. And then afterwards cropping a part out which you like, because the whole gradient mesh isn't going to look good there'll be certain parts of it with it you'll see what i mean once i go through it so before i start using the mesh tool i'm just going to change this to no stroke and i'm going to set it to like a dark blue feel just as the base color and i'm just going to be using blues for this uh, just because i think it's easier to work with so now i'm going to select this rectangle and press u on the keyboard which brings you to the mesh tool uh, which is this one here if you don't like using shortcuts and i'm just going to go through the basics so if you click somewhere it's going to create a point where it creates a subdivide uh, vertically and horizontally and then if you click this anchor point here you can actually um, change the color of this to like a light blue and it will change this point individually to the other points once you have this point you can move it around and this is where you get the nice abstract wavy look i guess so i'm just going to play around with all these anchor points here if you hold shift and drag one it will drag all four coming from the point that this one's coming from uh, so yeah to keep that in mind it's a quicker way of rotating this round so I'm happy with that for now um, I've got a sharp sort of I don't know what to call this but like where the lighter color meets the dark color uh, I've got a, made this one sharp here and then it sort of blurs out as it goes upwards I guess it's hard to explain because it's so it's so abstract um, you just you just click a point and then you add you change the color to you know a different color Let's try just purple this time like that and then you move it about that's literally the whole premise behind gradient meshes so here's just something with two points that i've made just really quickly but this is what i mean about cropping it if you had this as a twitter header the borders would be really dark and the center would be really light but if you cropped if i just make a new rectangle and make it 1500 by 500 which is a twitter header size and then made it smaller by holding shift to make sure I don't warp it in any way so I need to see through this so I'm gonna set the fill to nothing and then just set a stroke on it so I can always uh, select it when I want to so I'm just gonna crop something out which I think is a good area um, so yeah this could look good I may tone down the blue here a bit maybe a bit too light I think it is so I'm gonna just gonna turn it down that way actually I'm gonna okay what I'm gonna do is select this point here and then I I drop a one of these dark points and then from this color I'm gonna make it make it lighter so it's the same shade of blue but I'm just making it brighter and I'm gonna make this point darker just so there's a bit of difference in the Twitter header that's actually a good using two to three colors gives it a, a good look because there's an actual color scheme to it it's not so random so to crop the image you could crop it inside illustrator but if you want to just save it um, as one image straight away I'm gonna press shift and O to bring up the artboard editor and then obviously from this point you can edit the artboard move it about drag a new one the main thing we're gonna do is resize it though with these points in the corners so I'm just gonna drag this down to the corner of the Twitter header bounding box and then this one to the other corner like that and then I'm going to delete this rectangle and now we have the Twitter header inside there and then everything else on the outside but if we go ahead and hit Control shift alt s or save for web we now have just what's inside the Twitter header which we can go ahead and 
set to the right size and save this as its own separate image. So I'm going to save this as 3000 by 1000 approximately um, just because it's twice as big as the Twitter header dimensions uh, so we have a bit of room to play with the stock that we used. So I'm just going to save this as an image and then import it into Photoshop and then do the rest of the header. So one thing I forgot to mention is when you're saving for web on Illustrator make sure to select PNG or JPEG. Um, I'll probably put an image up of like where it is because if you don't then you're going to need to use an online converter and it's just inconvenient. So yeah just make sure you set it right first unlike me. Okay so now we have the image in a 3000 by 1000 document. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the logo and you can add text or whatever you want but I'm just going to show you what adjustments you can do to it after you have the actual stock so here we have the logo and i cropped it at this part because this sort of bend curve whatever you want to call it here gives a good placement for the logo here it sort of secludes it away from the rest of the header so i'm not going to add too many effects to it you could add a shadow underneath i'm just going to go through that quickly so i'm going to duplicate the logo and set a color overlay of black to it instead of white like that put it underneath the original logo and then I'm going to right click and rasterize layer style wherever that is. Okay, so you right click on the actual layer itself, rasterize layer style, which will just, you know, get rid of the layer styles but keep it the same. And then you want to go to filter, blur, motion blur, set the, uh, the angle, sorry, to 90 degrees and just set a little bit of vertical blur on it. Hit OK, drag it downwards and set the blending mode to soft light so what soft light does this is just back to normal now you can see it's just a black layer whereas with soft light it will make a darker version of the color underneath it with some colors like yellow or you know stuff like that it may not work so you just keep it as normal but if soft light does work then i encourage you to use it because it looks a lot better than just plain black but now i'm going to show you what other adjustments you can do to the color for example so the main obvious one is just go down to this half filled circle down here to the image adjustments and click hue saturation and this is the obvious one uh, just this hue bar here if you drag it along it will change the hue of the uh, the stock or whatever's underneath this layer it will adjust so um, it just changes the color of it pretty much so another adjustment layer you can use which I always use for color corrections all the time is curves this is just to control the contrast or not the contrast but the lights and darks of the picture which i use to control the, the contrast of it i'm just going to make an s curve which i went through on the video i made on visuals channel but you just want to make an s shape by pushing this higher quarter upwards and this lower quarter downwards and as you can see i'm just going to play around with it for a bit probably the darker darker bits like that like bits like that you can see before and after you know, it makes a huge difference in making the header pop, uh, whereas before you probably didn't notice, but it was really bland. Whereas after you can notice now it's not anymore. So another one you could add is color balance, maybe. So this sort of does the same as hue saturation, um, especially if you're using one color palette like this. It just gives you more freedom in what you're editing. So you can see if you click this drop down here, it gives you shadows, midtones and highlights. So you can just change the shadows individually from the highlights for example so before and after the color balance just gives it a lot brighter tone so you can see what just these two adjustment layers by themselves do it like you know creates a different tone completely so i've just added the text here and for a final thing that you could do i went through this on the the uh video i filmed on visuals channel as well but I'm just going to go through it again here i'm going to add a rounded rectangle and just add it as a board border around the text um, I've set the radius to really high so you get this sort of oval shape. Um, if I make the rounded rectangle really big you'll see it is a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to set the stroke to white. And there you go. Finished header. Really simple but you didn't use any stocks for this so you can just put no stocks used in the Twitter post if you do want to post it. And then you'll get 200 more likes than you would if you didn't put that. So, so yeah that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this did help. Um, if you want to see anything else like this, if you have any ideas, be sure to let me know. If there's anything that you're unsure of because I went too quick, then hit me up on my Twitter. I'll be happy to help. Um, again, check out the video I filmed on Visuals channel. It's how to make this. And yeah, peace.